now from New York. Mr. Minister, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it has been a very busy day. From your end, do you hear any talks about a possible ceasefire coming anytime soon? I am convinced the tide is turning. I am convinced the public pressure, the pressure of public opinion is mounting and ceasefire is inevitable. Israel is losing out. They're losing the media war despite their connections. They are losing the media war. The tide what are their, is turning. What are their connections? <laughs> Deep pockets. What does that mean? Well, they're very influential people. I mean, they control media. I, I mean, I, I would call that an anti-Semitic remark. Well, you see, the point is uh, they have a lot of influence. Uh, and uh, they get a lot of coverage. Now, what has balanced that is the citizen journalist who has, uh, who has been reporting, uh, sharing video clips, and that has jolted people, and that has woken up people, and people who are sitting on the fence are today speaking up. Do you see how uh, in different capitals of the world, in, 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 uh, in London, in Madrid, uh, you know, in, in, in Michigan, Chicago, every place from Sydney to uh, the European capitals, people have come out and saying, put an end to this insanity. They're calling for an immediate ceasefire. Now, the Security Council has failed in forging a, uh, a joint uh, a statement and, and coming out with a joint statement and forging a consensus. The General Assembly today is giving a clear message to the Security Council. It is your prime responsibility to ensure peace and security. Please live up to the UN Charter. But Mr. Ambassador, can we not separate the fact that there are calls for peace and for equal human rights for both sides, for Palestinians and for Israelis, without anti-Semitic talk and rhetoric? And we are seeing an increase in anti-Semitism throughout the world. Many of these protests are showing signs and images of anti-Semitism as well. Shouldn't you be condemning that? I will not justify any uh, rocket attacks. And I cannot justify and I cannot uh, condone the aerial bombardment that is taking place. But what about anti-Semitism? And what about I, Hamas's role in stopping the rockets? I am saying when you do not engage, when there are no negotiations, when there is occupation, when there is genocide, when there is war crime, when there is ethnic cleansing, then an extremist element takes advantage of that situation. Avoid it. How do you avoid it? You avoid it by pursuing a two-state solution, by adhering to the Security Council resolutions, respecting them, implementing them, fulfilling the promises that have been made and have been often broken. So, I believe that the answer is Israelis and Palestinians living side by side in peace and it can only be done through a two-state solution through negotiations by cessation of hostilities and ceasefire is the first step in that direction. Does that include condemning anti-semitism and condemning I'm statements? I am not justifying any of that. You began this conversation. I am so sorry. There are so many things I want to talk to you about, but I personally am offended as a journalist. You began this conversation by saying that Israel, suggesting that Israel has, quote, close friends and powerful friends in the media. That is an anti-Semitic trope. No, no. What I'm saying is the perception. Look at the perception the world has. You cannot ignore that, ma'am. But that's a wrong perception. Would be wrong, but that's the perception. Negate it. Well, someone, negate it. Someone, by, giving, by giving a balanced coverage, negate it. The onus is not on those who are being accused of things that aren't true. It, it's on people like you in powerful positions to say that that's wrong. Well, what we are saying, what is wrong is wrong, and I'm not shying away from that. What I'm saying is this insanity must come to an end. 
we must promote dialogue we must sit and talk and we must promote peace israelis and palestinians everybody has a right to live they have a right to protect their children look at what's happening 230 innocent people have been killed more than 50000 people have been displaced you know 50 schools have been bombed hospitals have been targeted red cross has been targeted the ap office you know media outlets have been targeted and what they are saying is okay if you think there was hamas presence there why don't you have an independent investigation well, I believe that Israel did provide it in, in some information and shared intelligence with, with the U.S. But let's go back to the other side because there are obviously Israeli casualties as well. And I, I keep bringing this up because if you're going to be an honest broker, then you have to approach something like this objectively. And that doesn't seem to be the place where you're coming from. Well, I am objective and I would want to be objective. Loss of life, I will not condone. Every life. Every human life is important.